Well, good morning. good morning. Well, we're glad to see all the hurdle masses yearning to come worship, especially since there's no sermon. In fact, I know some of my favorite sinners have shown up today since there is no sermon. So we're glad that you have come to be with us. Uh, I want to say thank you to Doug Barco uh, and myself because we've been trying to do everything we could to figure out how to make the Caroline speak outside. We can, you come in here at noon, you're welcome anytime at noon, you can come in here and you can hear it inside, but it's not talking outside. So I want to also thank the church council who voted to spend some money and we're going to have the experts show up and we're going to see if we can get the Caroline to work again. So uh, if you have a few extra dollars you might want to throw in the pot to help, you can just put that for the carillon or the bells or the ding whatever you want to call it, and uh, we'll, uh, we're going to get that taken care of. Our fair trade room has moved, and I want to... Um, the fair trade room is now in room three, which is at the end of the hall to your right, uh, has reopened and they're having a sale, 20% off of all merchandise except coffee, tea, and cocoa. There are signs showing the way and there's some flying discs like this one that you might find that will help lead you to the fair trade room. And they're even having 50% off of certain items. So uh, come in and experience. It's going to be open after worship, correct? Uh-huh. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm watching this one, so y'all just... All right. We're glad. We are going to do a blessing of the animals on Tuesday, October the 4th at 2 p.m. out under here under the portiche, um, a carport, whatever you like to call that, uh, off of Boyce Hall. And so we'll be doing that. Please bring your animals if they need to be on, well, hopefully on leashes and stuff like that. But we'll have that, a brief service, and, and enjoy that time on the 4th of October. So those are what I have to share with us. So let's uh, wave to each other, pass the peace. Good to see everybody here. We're going to hear the chimes, and then uh, we got a, I understand, a really nice prelude.
If you will, join together in our prayer. You hear us, our words in prayer, our silent thoughts and pleads, and each note of melody we sing and play. May our praises today connect with heaven and unite our hearts with the sound of eternity. Lord, may the gifts of our voice and the melodies of our instruments move with the work of your Holy Spirit. May we bring light into dark places, restore hope and vision to all who are oppressed, and well-being and help to all those who suffer. Today, Lord, we give you our worship. May it be pleasant for you, Creator God, to touch our lives afresh and build your church. Amen. Judy, would you like to tell us a little bit about this wonderful instrument that's in front of your feet? scratch the floor. Um, this is a military field organ. Uh, SD Company, I think it's in, well, it's in the Northeast. Rattenboro. Rattenboro, sorry. Uh, um, uh, made these for the, for the Army mostly, but for the military up into the 1960s, and I figured out this one probably was in the 1960s. Um, I got it from North Middletown, Kentucky, where Disciples of Christ was founded, and they have a museum, and they have the original church with a building built around that church, and they do have a real-life pump organ in there, and I got to play it for a service in the middle of July. And uh, so when the curator retired, he said he had this, and I said, absolutely, I want it, and it languished for quite a while and then a few years ago I had it restored in Portland, um, Tennessee. So I, I go like this and it has two paddles on the outside of my knees and if I go like this it gets louder. <laughs> and I've got a couple little knobs that will bring up um, more of the, of the organ but it's a lot of fun. So I get my, I get my steps in today. <laughs> Well, I'm glad that you've come today for this day of music. It's always fun when I do this for uh, uh, my interims. Um, I firmly believe that this is a, a good test of our theology. I generally share this with the search committee because this will tell a little bit about the theology of our congregation, the songs that we love and we want to hear. Now, let me just tell y'all, y'all are all over the place. Y'all are everywhere. I couldn't believe how long the list is with just one single X by a lot of songs. In fact, it didn't take a whole lot to end up being the number one song in, the hymn, in our singing. But it's only a test of today. Our faith has always been a singing faith. When we go back to our Jewish tradition, we have a whole book uh, in the Hebrew canon, the book of Psalms, which was their hymn book, where they would sing and proclaim. Of course, in, in Paul's letter to the church in Philippi, we think we have one of the considered the first hymn in Christendom, the Christological hymn, Let This Mind Be in You, which is also in Christ Jesus. That was, we think, one of the first hymns. Um, that the, the people would sing about their faith. And so I grew up in a tradition where we sang. Uh, somebody asked me about my stole that I'm wearing today. This is the one my mama made. My Baptist mama made a stole. Now that's pretty, that's pretty special. But my mother sang in the church choir for over 50 years. And my daddy did it until his death. So I grew up in a singing faith. And on Sunday night, that was the best part of going back to church, since we didn't do it right the first time, uh, was that we got to do a lot of singing at night. So number 10 in our countdown uh, is, uh, and yes, there are blanks in the bulletin, because I didn't want y'all to know in advance 
as we count it down. Uh, this is a traditional Christian hymn of Irish origin. Uh, its best known English version with some minor variations was translated in 1905. Uh, it was published and that folk tune slain in the church hymnal is the most popular hymn in England. In fact, I, anybody want to take a, get, uh, a bet on that it may be played tomorrow uh, at Westminster Abbey? Who knows? That'll be, that's something for you to watch. Yes. So anybody want to guess what, that, what the song is, our hymn, our tenth hymn? Oh, okay. It's Be Thou My Vision, 451. That's another thing about our hymns. We are back hymnal people. Almost all our hymns are past the 200s. Um, but our first one is 451. We're going to sing all, four, all the verses. <laughs> one is, uh, is the only one that y'all selected that's not in our hymnal, not in the New Century hymnal. Um, so that gives you a clue. Uh, it's anonymous. We know nothing. There is no history. Everywhere I looked on the internet, it's just anonymous. There's nobody that wrote the music. No credit is given to the words. But it's a great hymn. Anybody want to take a guess? Well, somebody and I, we were discussing, there's a, a, a fun way to sing that. Just a bowl of butter beans. You all have ever sang that version of it? Just a bowl of butter beans. Pass the cornbread, if you please. 
No, lock them colored greens. Just a bowl, just a bowl of butter beans. Well, it's just a closer walk with thee. So let's sing. Number eight uh, is an interesting one. It's um, like the last one. It's a gospel song. Uh, traditionally in hymnody, they'll refer to a hymn as a, a, as a song that has just stanzas and not a repeat chorus. And a gospel song is one that has a chorus. Uh, this is a, well, it's a popular. It was... Um, um, in fact, last night on PBS, uh, they sang that uh, on a special from uh, Fisk University. Um, so it was uh, written by a Albert Edward Brumley. Uh, didn't, he passed away in 77, so he uh, is pretty modern in our time. It's not exactly our newest hymn that we're going to sing, uh, but he was better known as the father of Southern Gospel. Anybody want to take a guess? Well, it starts with some glad morning. I'll fly away, 595. Three 
three verse. Yeah. <laughs> as we come time to our prayer time, we see we have a pretty long list of concerns that are within our congregation. Uh, Sam spoke to me and wanted me to share with everyone that Shell up in Maine is going to be having a pacemaker tomorrow, right? Tomorrow is going to be, so we want to send our prayers and and positivity towards Shell um, as she faces that um, good thing in her life to happen. So we pray for her and the many other concerns. Now today I do have our words to our new prayer song for this season and so the choir is going to sing for it uh, first time and then we're going to join in uh, the second time. Let us pray. 
O loving God and creator of all, we ask that you bless this music, that it might be a way to glorify you. May the talents that you have bestowed upon us be used to serve you and praise you. Let this, our music, be a witness to your majesty and love and remind us that you are always watching us and listening to us. May your presence and beauty be found in every note and may the words that are sung reach the hearts of your people so that we will be drawn closer to your presence. May your spirit guide us through every measure so that we might be instruments of your peace and proclaim your glory with the greatest voice. And so we pray the words that your son has taught us to say, our mother, father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, our next hymn is uh, in the first part of our hymnal. It's less than a hundred, so that tells you something about it. Uh, it is, a, well, it's a beautiful hymn. It uh, was written by, now this is, I had fun trying to learn how to pronounce this, Follett St Stanford Pierpont. Pierpoint, excuse me, Pierpoint. Uh, and he wrote it at the age of 29 years old. Uh, and uh, I kept hunting and hunting, trying to find an image of him, and I never did. Uh, I, I had one, but I was going, ah, I don't think so. It looked a little too modern. But uh, it's um, a great hymn, uh, and it's For the Beauty of the Earth, found on page 28 of our hymnal. Thank you.
number six um, sort of surprised me. I was uh, a little bit surprised that this didn't make the list uh, a little higher or closer to one. And, uh, but this one, um, it, I think y'all are going to be able to guess that. It's written by a guy named John Newton, the former slave trader to an abolitionist. Anybody want to take a guess? I may, you are a high, see, sharp, sharp. 547, Amazing Grace. here at the almost halfway point, uh, is, um, is probably our newest of the hymns. Uh, it is uh, written by this gentleman. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name. Uh, just passed away. In fact, I didn't know this, but he was a president of a college uh, when he wrote this and wrote it in 1985. And it is uh, found... Uh, on 351, I was there to hear your morning cry.
those of you worshiping here today, there are plates at both entrances and on the table here in front. For those worshiping virtually, you're also invited to be part of our ministry and mission of this church by giving online. Simply go to our website at pleasanthilluccn.org where there's a tab for giving. In 1985, a song was written by Lionel Richie and Michael Jackson to raise money for American famine relief. It sold more than 20 million copies and received a Grammy for Song of the Year. The nonprofit organization USA for Africa raised more than $75 million, which helped to fight poverty in Africa. I thought it was appropriate to share a little bit of this song today on our special Hymn Sunday, since it's, about, since it's about giving, and the fact that everyone in the world is interconnected, regardless of race, so everyone should love each other. The song is, We Are the World. So please help me in singing, because I'm not a singer. <laughs> please help me in singing this, these words. Thank you. That's us, sir. this morning noticed that we were going to do that so thank you you did a good job thank you
Let us pray. Dear Lord, bless our gifts. Help us to give not only money, but of ourselves, especially to those in need, to those that are less fortunate. Let us help others with a smile on our faces. Let us be sensitive to those that are hungry. Let us dig a little deeper. Let us spread happiness to those that are sad. Let us remember that faith will bring us peace, love, and eternal life. Amen. Well, our fourth top hymn uh, is uh, written by this gentleman, Henry Francis Lyle. Uh, he wrote several hymns. This one that we're going to sing in a minute is his uh, most favorite one, Jesus I, uh, Jesus, I, My Cross Have Taken. Of course, Praise the Soul, the King of Heaven, you all may know. Uh, and then the pleasant are the courts above. I've not ever heard that one. But our fourth one is Abide With Me, which is hymn number 99. And we're going to sing, hold on. We're going to sing the first, third, and fifth verses. Our third one is um, sort of surprised me slightly when I um, said, really? This is y'all's third top hymn? But it is a, a great gospel song. It's a fairly modern one. It was written by this man. Uh, he was born in Villa Rica, Georgia. I always like to say Villa Rica. Georgia, and that's what he looked like when he was a blues singer. And if faith had come to him, and he became also known as the father of gospel music and the black tradition. Uh, he died in 1993, and his, anybody want to guess? Precious Lord, take my hand. And we're going to sing the 
first and third verses of 472. Number two, this one did not come at all a surprise to me for the simple fact is I've heard too many requests to be sung at, at uh, funerals or, or memorial services because they, it is, well, so often it was their hymn of their confirmation. So that gives you an idea, you might, anybody want to? Take a guess. It was written by this gentleman, Howard Walter. Anybody? You are correct. You are correct. 493. We're going to sing verses 1 and 3. 493. What? Oh, excuse me, 492. They're too close to each other. 492, I apologize. To be honest was a shocker. 
a shocker to me. I was going, like, really? That's what y'all consider your favorite hymn by the group of people that voted? Because it's one of my favorite hymns, and so often I have to introduce this hymn to the congregation on a special day. Anybody? It was written by a woman that I kept hunting and hunting and hunting, trying to uh, find a picture of her. Uh, it was first published in 1929. It was written by an English woman. Yes, Lesbia Scott. I sing the songs of the saints of God. 295. And so that we don't get ourselves into too much trouble, we're going to sing the first and third stanzas of 295. I sing the songs of the saints of God. <laughs> Thank you for electing these hymns. Uh, we do have the list, and you never know, some of the lesser ones will pop up. Uh, in fact, this one will be popping up soon uh, in a few weeks. But we are glad that you have come and worshiped, and we hopefully this has drawn us closer to our God. So this is our benediction that I, I like, and I would like for you to join in with me. We, the church, are leaving the building to love God, love people, and to live the Beatitudes. Let us go in peace.